if you can't focus, then you can't focus your energy. And if you can't focus your energy, nothing grows. And people's energy is going all over the place and nothing ever manifests in people's lives. When a monk enters a monastery, they're stripped of all their physical possessions, their friendships, their relationships, and they are dedicated to the monastery. And in this video, we are with a monk, Monk Dandapani or ex-monk Dandapani. Uh, one of my favorite guys online and this video is talking about stripping back everything stripping back for your mindset for your for your mental health and well-being and for refocusing and readjusting your goals and this is an extremely important video about how to do that practically not just from giving up everything that i've got but talking about the other processes and who better to talk about it than a monk like genuinely this is, the, this is the guy who I listen to on a daily basis about this kind of stuff. Today's video was brought to you by betterhelp.com where you can get online therapy from professionals. And as always, mulliganbrothers.com where you can get the Inspire Change t-shirts. Before that, I am your host, Jordan Mulligan. Let's jump into this amazing video with Dan Dapani talking about how you can strip everything back and readjust and reassess your life. Most people think that when you're on the spiritual path, because they see monks renouncing material possessions and all that stuff, and people, and they go like, oh, material possessions are bad. And that's kind of a common theme or understanding on the spiritual path that if I'm spiritual, I shouldn't be wealthy. Money is the root of the all evil. I shouldn't have material possessions. That's not really the reason, though, for, at least from the Hindu perspective, right? And the Hindu perspective of viewing it, that every material possession we have, we have an energetic connection to it. So I have my laptop, I have a little energetic connection with that. I have my iPhone, I have a little energetic connection with that. So if I have a thousand things, I have a thousand pieces of energetic connection to each of those items, which means energy is flowing out of me into those thousand things. Now, if I reduce those thousand things to a hundred things, now I have less energy flowing out of me. Now, if I reduce it to 10 things, now I have less energy flowing out to me, which means I have a lot more energy. At the end of the day, what the goal was, was the, of the monastic life and, and understanding renunciation. It, it's not saying that material things or relationships with people are bad. All it was focused on was the conservation of energy. The idea was to conserve and accumulate as much energy as possible take that accumulated energy, focus that energy into specific areas of the mind to awaken higher states of consciousness. So imagine my mind as having a million light bulbs. If I stick a one and a, a AAA battery in my spine, I might light up one of those light bulbs. If I stick a nine volt battery in my spine, I might light up two or three of those light bulbs. But imagine if I plugged my spine into the, the power station that powered New York City. I could light up all these areas in my mind. So in order to light up those areas in the mind, you need sufficient amount of energy to channel it into those areas of the mind. How do you, energy cannot be created or destroyed, right? But you, you can transfer energy from one thing to another. So the whole idea with renunciation is really making conscious, wise choices of where we're investing our energy, where we're hemorrhaging our energy letting go of those things, accumulating energy, and then concentrating it to very specific areas of the mind so that we can awaken higher centers of consciousness. So that really was the purpose of uh, this whole process. So now you're working with extremely successful athletes and entrepreneurs. Does, does that carry over? You, do you teach them to sort of strip back to make sure that their energy is focused on their task in hand? Completely. So take an, take an athlete, for example, you know, whether it's a soccer player or a tennis player, whoever it may be, if you're playing at the highest level, there's so many things that are demanding your energy. You know, the press might be talking about you, the fans might be saying something about you, the critics out there. And if you're not careful, your energy could be directed to all of those things. Oh, I can't believe, you know, the Guardian said that about me. I can't believe the Times said that about me. You know, how, how could they, you know? This is just so not true what they tweeted about me. I never said that. And before you know it, you, you're engaged in 20 different things or 30 different things that really don't deserve your attention and your energy. When your energy could be redirected and funneled towards what it is you want to accomplish. 
But if you look at most people, where where's our energy going? All over the place. We're, we're like a garden hose that we just swing around like a wild person. Have you ever turned the garden hose on, turned the tap on, and let the garden hose sit on the on the grass? It's like a snake, right? It's just like it's going all over the place. Nothing gets watered, but if you can actually grab the hose and point it at a plant, the plant gets sufficient energy, a sufficient water for it to grow. Energy works the same way too, and that's why learning to focus is so critical and something that I always talk about. Because at the end of the day, if you can't focus, then you can't focus your energy, and if you can't focus your energy, nothing grows. And people's energy is going all over the place, and nothing ever manifests in people's lives. And then they wonder why, you know, the whole visualization law of attraction thing doesn't work. Well, you can't bloody focus. That's why it doesn't work. Yeah, I love it. Uh, so, d- just going from energy, let's let's move over to focus. Like, yeah. ov- obviously, you've had an extremely successful TEDx talk with focus. You've got a book coming out later next year, um, yes. and it's all based around focus concentrate like just to, for, for me what does it mean when you say focus so i define focus as my ability to keep my awareness on one thing or one person or whoever i'm engaged with for an extended period of time so if i can keep my awareness on you and not let it go to the left to the right to somewhere else i'm being focused so that's how i define being focused And it's really important, you know, for all the people listening that to define words, because people use words in today's world just so indiscriminately. You know, I'll give you an example. People say things like, when I walk my dog every evening, that's my meditation. Cooking is my meditation. And then another person is sitting down cross-legged, spine straight, you know, breathing, regulating his breath, eyes closed. That's my meditation. So I'm like, I'm very confused. What is meditation? Is it walking your dog? Is it cooking? Is it sitting down cross-legged? Is this a podcast or is this an interview or are we are we jogging right now? This is my jogging, you know, Jordan. <laughs> this is this is for me this is jogging. Is that the right use of the word? Not at all, no. Yeah, so, you know, people just, I don't know, say all kinds of crazy stuff. So I think, you know, as we learn, as we learn about these different things, the first step is defining what these words are. When we define it, it's very clear to our conscious mind, to our subconscious mind, what this word is, how it's being used, and therefore we can now begin to use it in a, in a way that can effectively help us. Right, our subconscious understand how the word is and now can use it to, to help create change in our life. Thank you so much to Dan Dapani for this amazing video and to, to coming onto the show. Uh, it is really appreciated. We have interviewed quite a few monks and ex-monks now and the process of stripping everything back I think has, leads them to such a, a spiritual awakening and understanding of Uh, dropping the conditions that society has brainwashed us with over the younger years of our life and well our whole lives basically of you have to have this watch you have to have this car you have to have this amount of friends you have to have this relationship and all these kind of things that I would say almost poison our mind and make us lose sight of what is really important so this video to me is an extremely important one please share it with people if you think it will help them like that is the inspire change movement if you want to be a part of it go inspire change yourself or share these kind of messages as well today's video was sponsored by betterhelp.com where you can get online therapy from professionals with the link in the description something i've done for a full year now and i fully recommend it you can try it if you like it stay on if you don't it just wasn't for you and also thank you so much to audible.com we can get a free audio book with the link in the description and as always mulliganrose.com um, guys everyone who's been supporting our sponsors and heading over to mulliganrose.com to buy the inspire change t-shirts you have made this inspire change movement possible we cannot thank you enough genuinely thank you so much for doing this um, yeah go follow me on instagram i'm your host jordan mulligan that is the mulligan River show for today and i'll see you in the next one peace <laughs>